Hello to my Griffin artists and welcome to this week's art lesson. I'm super excited. Do I say that a lot? I feel like I say that every time because you know what? I am super excited. Anytime I get to make an art video and create with you makes me super excited and art makes me super excited. That's why I'm an art teacher. So let's talk about what you see before you right now. This is a painting and you might recognize the person in the painting. So first, let's talk about what you see, and then I'm going to tell you about the person, the artist that created this beautiful painting. This is, painting is what you would call a portrait. We're going to learn about portraits in this video, and at the end of the video, you're actually going to be making your own portrait. But first, let's talk about what we see. You might recognize this person in this portrait. This is former President Barack Obama. And this is what we call not only a portrait, but a presidential portrait. Ba -ba -ba -ba! Very important. Every president of the United States has a portrait. They select an artist to paint their portrait. It's very important. For an artist, it's sort of like winning the Super Bowl six times or seven times in a row. And it's very exciting. And their portrait, they work very, very hard on, and they work with the president. They talk about how the president would like his portrait to look, how he might like to look, um, what style he would like. But President Barack Obama, along with his wife, Michelle Obama, First Lady, former First Lady Michelle Obama, selected, they both selected artists to um, paint their portraits. And they sort of research and study and look at different artists, and then they decide. Well, Barack Obama chose the, an artist by the name of Kin Day Wiley. And here is a picture of Mr. Wiley. Mr. Wiley was born February 28th. He's got a birthday coming up. Happy birthday, Mr. Wiley. And he lived, he was born actually, he's Nigerian born, but he lived in LA, Los Angeles, California, and now he lives in New York City. And he was selected to paint the portrait of Barack Obama. Now, Mr. Wiley is the first African-American artist to paint the first African-American president. If you take a minute to think about that, you'll realize it's really important and it's really cool. And as you know, this is Black History Month and we're learning about important African-American artists. And Kende Wiley is certainly very, very important. He's probably one of the most famous artists in the world right now. He created this presidential portrait. Tell me what you see. Now, I wish I could hear what you were saying, um, but you might say things like, well, he's sitting and his arms are crossed. And you probably immediately noticed after you noticed that you recognized the man in the picture, right after that, you probably noticed all this craziness going on in the background. It's sort of not very traditional. If you know what traditional means, it means sort of expected or what you generally would see. This is not, this background is not normally what you might see in a portrait. Um, and it's very um, specific to this artist. Kinde Wiley is known for creating these backgrounds in his portraits. As you see, here's another portrait. So he, I mean, the way that he paints is so magnificent, it almost looks like a photograph, but he painted this portrait of this gentleman and then he created this background, um, which is this sort of flowery, um, almost looks like um, fabric. And I actually do believe that he um, sort of paints fabrics that are from the area where the model, whoever is modeling in this picture is from. Um, so 
For example, if he painted this young man and this young man was from a certain area of the world, he might find some fabric from that area and then kind of recreate it in the background. Um, same with this. This is sort of a, the look of something we might call a tapestry. Now, for President Barack Obama, he created this background, which we would call foliage. So leaves, lots of leaves, that is another word for that is foliage. But he has tucked into these leaves, you'll see different colored flowers. And all of those flowers symbolize something. Do you know what symbolize means? Symbolize means it's something that sort of represents or means something else. So for example, a pumpkin sort of symbolizes Halloween or the fall. Um, a cross symbolizes, that's one of our symbols as Christians. A cross, a crucifix with Jesus on it, that is a symbol of the Catholic faith. So a symbol represents something. And Kinde Wiley, as this artist, created this really cool background. And then into the leaves or the foliage, he tucked these different flowers, but they all have a different symbol. They're all symbolic. So for example, right here, you see this kind of orange, reddish, yellow flower, and that is called a chrysanthemum. Now, um, it's interesting because cities and states have flowers that represent them. Um, for example, the state of Maryland has a black-eyed Susan as their flower. Well, the city of Chicago, which is where former President Barack Obama lived for many, many years, that flower that represents that city is a chrysanthemum. So Mr. Wiley painted chrysanthemums in the background. He sort of tucked them into the foliage, and that represents part of President Barack Obama's life. He also tucked in these little white flowers. These are called jasmine, and those represent Hawaii. Have you ever been to Hawaii? I have never been, but it is where President Barack Obama was raised from a little boy. He lived in Hawaii, and so the artist wanted to represent that in this painting, and so he tucked and painted these little jasmine flowers into the background. You'll also see these sort of purplish flowers, those are purple African lilies, and President Barack Obama is African-American. So these flowers, these African lilies, represent his background. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. It sort of reminds us that when we look at a painting, it, there's what we see, but then there's many, many little layers to it. So I wonder if... Mr. Wiley was painting a portrait of you, what he would paint in the background. Maybe if you were from Maryland, he would maybe paint some black eyed Susans in the background of your painting. Um, they're yellow flowers with yellow petals with a black in the center of them. That's why they're called black eyed Susans. Maybe if you live in Washington, DC, he would paint cherry blossoms because Washington, DC is known for their cherry blossoms. I don't know. Very interesting. Maybe he wouldn't do flowers at all. Maybe he would do something else. But it shows you that there's lots of meaning in these paintings. Um, but they are portraits. And Kinde Wiley is known for his portraits. Another word for portrait art is portraiture. And that's a big word. Um, and I won't make you say it. Don't worry. But I just wanted to, to tell you what it was. So let's look again at Mr. Wiley's picture. I love this, he's in a suit, but it has paint all over it. Very cool. So now, what I want you to do is I want you to take out a piece of paper and you're gonna need a pencil and an eraser or a pencil with an eraser. But if you see, this pencil is much like all the pencils in my home and does not have an eraser. So I had to go and grab a separate one. So grab a pencil and an eraser and a piece of paper, and let's begin to draw your portrait. I have my paper. Now, what we're going to be doing is, if you were right in front of me, I would draw your portrait. 
but we're going to be drawing our own portraits and we call those self portraits because you're drawing a portrait of yourself. So I want you to pause the video and I want you to go and look in a mirror and I want you to look at your face. I want you to look at your eyes, where they are placed on your face. I want you to look at your nose, your mouth, your ears, and even your awesome hairdo. And I want you to take a moment to really look at your face, and then I want you to come back to the video. So you can go ahead and pause it here, go run and find a mirror, and take a look at that beautiful, handsome, wonderful face, and then come back. Okay, so hopefully now you're, you've taken a look at your face. Now, if you even have a small mirror, you could use that during this lesson, or you can just draw from what you remember seeing. We're going to start out drawing an oval shape. Okay, we're gonna draw an oval shape and that is gonna represent your head. So, this is why we have erasers, okay? If your oval is not how you like it to be, don't worry about it, just try it again. Here's my oval, and I got a little bit bumpy at the top there, so I'm gonna go in and erase that and smooth out my line, okay? And does your oval have to be perfect? No because I hate to break it to you, but our faces are not perfectly shaped. So, um, for example, I think I have one eye that's bigger than the other, but uh, let's just keep that between you and me. Um, but anyway, you know, our faces are not necessarily perfectly shaped. So don't worry if there's little um, bumps. Now, if it's a big bump where the shape is no longer an oval, then you'd need to erase that and, and redo it. So it needs to resemble an oval shape. Now, we're going to very lightly draw a line that goes from the top of the head to the bottom, and then we're going to do a line that goes from the side to the side. I'm going to do this very lightly because I'm gonna end up erasing this line. We're just using this li these lines as guideposts to show us where our features, which are the things that are on our face, the features on our face are our eyes, our nose, our mouths, our chins, our cheeks, and our ears. Those are our features, our facial features. So I'm gonna to try to find the middle, and I'm going to draw the line, right, up and down, and then I'm going to try to find the middle here, and I'm going to draw a line side to side. Now, Believe it or not, this is where our eyes are gonna go. If you started to draw this, you might have put the eyes way up here because they're at the top of your head. They're towards the top of your head, right? Believe it or not, that's actually too high. Your eyes are actually much lower on your head. One of the things that you're learning today. So here is where we would draw our eyes. This is where we're gonna draw our eyes. So we're gonna make two shapes, almost like a football. That's sort of like an oval with kind of points. Now you might say, oh, well, my eyes are shaped like this or my eyes are shaped like that, and that's fine. Sorry, my phone's ringing. So let's just leave that there for now. That's where our eyes are gonna go. Now with this line here, we're going to find the middle and draw a little line, and that's where your nose is going to go. Now from this line, to the chin, we're gonna bring our fingers together. We're gonna to find out where the middle is. And this is where your mouth is going to go. Let me say that again, because I was talking quickly. And remember, you have a pause button for a reason. So we placed our eyes. Remember, we made our line coming up and down in the middle, and then our line going across. And then that's where we put our eyes this line here is where our nose and our mouth is going to go. To find where our nose goes, we find where the middle is between here and the chin, between this line, our eye line, and our chin. So we move together, 
and that's where our nose is gonna go. So you can make a little line there, so you know that's where your nose is gonna go. Then we're cutting that space in half to where our mouth is gonna go. So our so really, we're just making halves. We're kind of dividing this in halves, kind of cutting it. So here's your whole head. We find the half mark, that's where we put our eyes. And then from there, we find the half mark, and that's where we put our nose. And then from there, we find our half mark, and that's where we put our mouth. I know, it's a lot. So we know where our eyes are. Remember, our eyes are in the halfway between our head, between the top of our head and, the, and our chin. Where it meets in the middle is where our eyes go. From our eyes to our chin, we meet in the middle. That's where our nose goes. From our nose to our chin, we meet in the middle, and that's where our mouth goes. Okay, so now we know that our nose goes here. Now, I'm gonna show you a way to draw a nose. Now, you can draw your nose however you feel that your nose goes, but one of the ways that you can draw a nose is you make a small C on one side and a small C on the other side. And then you can go in. So you have got one C going this way, one C going that way. And then I'm gonna go in and sort of make a little bit of a flattened U. Now I'm gonna go up and erase that little line. So for my nose shape, I did a C, C, so a frontward C and a backward C, and then I kind of connected them a little bit with that U shape. Bring that up so you can see, okay? And if you want, you can bring part of the nose up or not. You can go back to do that, depending on your shape. Let's talk about our lips. This is where our lips are gonna go. So I'm gonna draw a little bit of a line here. Whoopsie, my camera fell a little bit, okay. Draw a little bit of a line here, and here's where I'm gonna draw my lips. Now, if you wanna go and pause and go back and look at your lips, you can do that. Or you can say, no, I know that my lips are thin, or I know that my lips are full or bigger, um, and I know I have an upper lip, and I know I have a bottom lip. So I'm gonna draw that in. Is your lip, does your lip go out further than your nose? Is it smaller than your nose? Is it right about the same size? So you can go up and just sort of play with that. So what I typically do is I, you have that line there and that's where your lips meet and you draw your upper lip and your lower lip. Now I'm gonna come up to where my eyes are and I'm gonna go in and I'm going to draw the circles, and then you have a little black. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do the circles here, and then you can color in when we go back. When you add color, you can go in and color. But above your eyes, you have eyebrows. Now, between your eye and your nose is where your ear goes. So go ahead and draw those ears. A little ear shape. And then you have that inner part of the ear. Okay. Again, the ear shape that I drew is sort of like a long, almost like a C shape going backwards. A long C shape. Now we're going to draw your neck. So your neck, sometimes people draw it just like this. And that's okay, but it's not exactly how somebody's neck looks when you look at them. They, their neck is actually almost more towards, you see it almost more towards the ear. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down the side and have our line for our neck coming down. 
because your neck is actually wide. It's, you know, um, a big part, almost as wide as your face sometimes. So you don't want to make your neck too small. That would be too small. Um, so you want to, I would say, kind of come down from where your ears are, come down a little bit and then make your neck. And I'm just going to draw the top of a, a shirt there and then the shoulders. Now let's talk about hair. Um, your hair um, actually starts down onto your forehead, um, unless you are don't have any hair. Um, so a lot of times when you are first starting to draw, you'll draw your hair up here like this, right? And that's too much forehead. That doesn't look right. So actually, your hair is going to um, start on your forehead. So you sort of figure out, do I have a part in my hair? And if I do, is it over here? So you sort of draw this line, and then you're going to come down with your hair on both sides. Okay? This might be a time to go back and look in the mirror and, and see... Um, where you have a part in your hair. That's where your heart, where your hair um, divides. Now you might not have a part in your hair. Um, so you might not draw that, but if, but most people do, um, uh, but sometimes you have haircuts that are a little bit higher up. So you could um, draw that a different way. Um, let me show you if you didn't have a part. So you might have a part on this side or that side, and what you would do is you would kind of draw a line there where the part is, and then you'd have the hair coming down on both sides. And then you would go up and erase that head line, okay? Now, if you're saying, well, I looked and I don't feel like I have a um, part in my hair, or maybe if this was a girl and she had her hair tied back in a ponytail, there wouldn't, there wouldn't be a part, right? It would sort of just be tied back. Or maybe your hair is a little bit uh, shorter and you don't have a part, you have a shorter hair cut. Um, and so maybe it would sort of, so here was my original headline, my, my oval shape, but maybe your hair would be just kind of going back like this then, okay? But either way, you're going to start your hair sort of a little bit above where your eyebrows are. Now, I'm going to go back now because these eyebrows are a little too thin. I'm going to go back and, and make them a little bit thicker. And I'm going to then go in and start creating my eyes. So I'm going to grab some crayons. So say you have gray eyes or green eyes or blue eyes. I think for this project, um, crayons are best. And let's see. I'm going to find Is this a blue? Okay, well this would be very blue eyes and I wish I had blue 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 eyes like this, but we'll go in and I would draw the color just in that circle. Sometimes people make the mistake of coloring in the whole eye, that color. Um, and and um, that is not where all the color is. You have the white of the eye and then of the eyeball, and then you have the color. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm going to make the little retina that's there. And then you can start adding colors. Now, what 
is tricky is finding a crayon that's the right skin tone for you. Um, I'm gonna just do some red lips, but you, you might say, well, my lips are pink. So I would think this person, um, this is me, I guess, with lipstick on. Um, you can come, go in and go ahead and add your color with your hair. And your color of your hair will be the color of your eyebrows. And you're gonna come up and I'm just going to start coloring in my hair. Now this is, this might be the first time that you tried to draw a portrait of yourself, in which case we're not together in the art room to do it together and I'm not right in front of you to help you. So with this project, what I want is for you just to start kind of understanding where your features are placed on your face. Okay, so you don't need to stress if you say, this doesn't look like me, or this is, you know, um, I don't like this, that's okay. This is just practicing um, how you would draw a face. Um, because we will be doing portraits again, and it's always so fun for your parents to have portraits of their children, um, especially done by their children. And I have one, a portrait that my son, who went to modern day, who doesn't, he already graduated, I have one that he did of himself in his modern day tie. And I just would love for you to be able to have that so that when you're older, maybe an eighth grader at modern day, you can look back and say, oh my gosh, look at my portrait from when I was in first or second grade. So today's video is just a practice and I'm hoping that soon I'll be able to get you into the art room and we'll be able to do your portraits in the art room. So I would just continue to add my color, um, add my skin color. Now I'm buying for the art room some crayons that are skin toned because they, in the traditional package of crayons, they don't have um, a lot that have the different skin tones in them because some people are really fair like I am. Um, some people have a little bit of a darker skin. Um, so there's, we all have different colored skin. So I want to have crayons in the art room that um, reflect everybody's um, skin tone. So I'm going to have that soon. Um, but do the best that you can with the crayons that you have at home. Um, there is sometimes uh, like tans um, and like peaches that you have in your crayons that would work. And um, then you can come in and you can draw, um, color your um, shirt and things like that. You can make your cheeks rosy. Um, and we'll go over this again. Don't worry about that. Now, if you are going into the main office at all where um, Mrs. Sullivan is. Maybe you're coming to get a Band-Aid or maybe you're walking through to go to the chapel. Please take a look at the bulletin board because on the bulletin board are some of your projects, the ones that have been returned um, of Clementine Hunter. And also on the bulletin board is a picture of Kinde Wiley, who we learned about today, and some of the fourth grade portraits. Um, are hanging there that the fourth graders did. So I'm very excited that um, in the future we'll be able to create neat portraits of, of each of you for you to have. Um, and maybe one day you'll have your own presidential portrait. Although you don't need to be president to have an awesome portrait done of yourself. So you might already have in your house a portrait. Maybe your parents have had portraits done. Um, paintings or watercolors or charcoal or pastel portraits. So my Griffins, I hope you're having a wonderful week. And just remember our wonderful portrait that we learned about and wonderful artist Kinde Wiley that we learned about. And I hope you have a wonderful time working on your portraits. I'd love to see them. Um, otherwise, you can just use this sort of as a practice 
for when um, the day comes that we're all together in the art room and we work on our portraits. I hope you have a great day. Bye, Griffins.